Welcome to our training. Welcome, welcome. My name is Dr. Kasia Kainz. I am a CEO and founder of Global EBV Institute, or rather EBV Global Institute. Hello, everyone. And today is a very special training, EBV and sleep. I have amazing resources for you. I'm really excited to share them. So uh, let's talk about sleep in a very particular pattern of sleep deprivation or insomnia uh, for people with EBV. It's quite common in our community. So is, is that you? So do you have EBV, chronic EBV, and then you wake up randomly 3 a.m., 4 a.m., up to 5 a.m., you're all jittery, you are, you know, your heart palpitation is racing, you know, your heart is racing, you may experience hot flashes, feeling like you have fever or cold or chills, feeling anxious. And this is very concerning because it's coming out of blue field. There is no apparent reason to it. What are you going to do with it? Uh, and, you know, a sleep deprivation is a form of torture. So you need to sleep. And especially the deep REM sleep is so instrumental for anyone with EBV. Everything will be worse the next day if you don't get that deep sleep or enough sleep. And for people with chronic EBV, that alone can uh, trigger reactivation of EBV. So, so today I'm going to teach you about this very pattern of EBV-induced insomnia. <clears throat> like I said, it's quite common. And I'll explain what causes it, how to fix it and prevent it, because if that's what's running your, your nights, it's a very simple fix. <clears throat> now let's take a back step uh, for a moment and recognize that sleep is a huge, huge issue, a big topic. And so I could take probably, you know, another nine different trainings on it. So today I'm going to just focus on this particular aspect, but I have an entire chapter in my book if you don't have the book and you want to go deeper, I have a lot more in there for different scenarios. So um, one more thing that I'm going to say, uh, one more thing I'm going to say, which is not the topic of today's training, but I think it's an important point if you are a woman. So <laughs> listen up. According to research, Women experience higher stress than men. Now think about it. Stress is the number one reactivating factor for EBV. Okay? So here we go. And it's relevant. We're going to talk about stress more for, the, for that insomnia. So if women experience higher stress level than men, not surprisingly, they will have more insomnia than men because uh, in order to feel sleepy, you have to produce melatonin. You have to make it. Melatonin is a hormone that tells you you are sleepy. In order to make it, you need to make serotonin and you need to bring serotonin from food. Okay, so women, however, use up much more serotonin than men when they are under stress. That's number one whammy. There's a double whammy. Women also have eight times more blood supply to the emotional part of the brain during stress than men do. And so that causes the release of stored serotonin because serotonin has more than one function. If for, for our purpose, you know, serotonin helps you make melatonin so you're sleepy. But serotonin is also a neurotransmitter that calms you down. So the body pulls out the stored serotonin into the brain to calm down the woman who is under stress. As a result, women more than men are depleted of serotonin by the end of the day. And so sometimes they can't make enough melatonin and without melatonin, the brain is active. It remains active. And this is another reason why women cannot relax and fall asleep at night. So <laughs> I just wanted to say that might tie into our training today, but I just wanted to just make you aware so you are more cognizant of that stress. So let's go back to the EBV-induced insomnia pattern. When you wake up 3 a.m., 5 a.m., 4 a.m., and you're just wired and like, ah, what do you do with that? So, so the first thing to keep in mind is that majority of people with chronic EBV have already compromised a somewhat dysfunctional adrenal, adrenals 
from long-term stress, chronic stress. So as a result, you may have some, some level of dysregulation, you know, hypoglycemia, reactive hyperglycemia, too much glucose, too little glucose, confusion, the body goes up and down. And so sometimes <laughs> if you're trying to figure it out on your own, you might be restricting carbs because, you know, you don't do well with carbs. You go keto, you go high protein, you go low carb. All these diets are really not sustainable and not the right way to do it. So this dysregulation really means, you know, you might get my book and read about all this, or you just hire a clinical nutritionist to help you stabilize everything. I teach that a lot in our EBV recovery program. We have to stabilize that blood glucose. It's pretty, pretty simple. And you're going to get a taste of this a little bit in this training. Um, but that kind of comes with territory, you know, that you have to be careful with meals, that glucose up and down. Uh, so now let's talk about glucose because in this pattern, uh, your insomnia is related to glucose and, and the brain. So, ta-da, big reveal. So what do we do? Brain, your brain runs on glucose. Your muscles run on glucose. The energy of the body, the body requires runs on glucose. Your adrenals also do. So low, low carb diet is one of the worst choices for people with EBV. You really need foundationally good carbohydrates, good glucose sources to stabilize everyone inside there and to help the adrenals regenerate as well and heal. So this is why if you're confused by that, hire a clinical nutritionist and you'll be fine. They will teach you all that. So here's what happens. Sometimes your dinner is the culprit because it lacks solid glucose. And I'm not talking about candy and chips <laughs> and kill cookies. Yes, there's sugar in there, but that's not what we're talking about. So for example, if you're trying to cut, you know, on your weight because you're overweight and, you know, you're going to trim some carbs. Not a good idea. So you might have dinner with salad and steak. There's absolutely no glucose in this food. It's going to be very hard to sleep. I'm going to walk you through it shortly. Sometimes also breakfast or and lunch has very limited carbs because you're trying to lose weight, let's say. That's exactly the wrong direction and you will probably not sleep. So I'm afraid that each of your meals should require glucose. And I'm going to walk you uh, through some ideas for it. So you do have the energy for the body, the muscles, the brain, adrenals, all of that. Otherwise, insomnia is almost guaranteed. So uh, let's talk about carb choices. So I'll give you clarity and explain physiologically how you want to run your body. We don't want no carbs. We don't want the junk carbs. We don't want the fast carbs. The candy, the cookies, white table sugar, processed food. We want slow carbs. Um, slow carbs are whole foods, like, you know, tubers, starches, starchy vegetables, brown rice, black rice, whole cooked, properly cooked uh, grains, um, not gluten necessarily, but just um, starchy vegetables, potatoes, roots, beets, carrots. You have to incorporate them somewhere there in the meals. And you want to think about, do you want to uh, throw a newspaper in the fire or a, a log in the fire? Which fire will burn slower, longer, providing sustainable warmth? And this is the same with glucose. You want slow glucose, okay? So these are the foods that I I mentioned. Your, your glucose is your gasoline. You run on it, your muscles run on it, your brain run on it. This is the quality foods, okay? Oatmeal too, simple things. And so fruits also have very high level of glucose. And what you want to do is you want to slow the glucose with three components, fiber, a little bit of protein, and a little bit of healthy fat. So if you eat an apple as a snack, which is perfect, you're going to get some glucose. It already has a lot of fiber, so it's not going to skyrocket your blood sugar like candy or cookies. But if it does, you need to talk to a nutritionist because that's this regulation. You need support. <laughs> you should be able to have a piece of fruit and no problem. But if you need that for the night, for the brain, so the brain gets a slower 
glucose, if you slow down that glucose uptake to the brain, then you can match the fruit with some more protein and fat. Easy picks, nut butter, seed butter, maybe something like that. So you see where I'm going? So this really slows down. You already have fiber and that that extra component slows down that glucose in the apple even more. So this is kind of the premise uh, where I'm going to. So, uh, so let's walk through that night when you wake up. <laughs> what happens? So your blood glucose drops at night because maybe you had dinner at 5 p.m. and there was steak salad and nothing else. So now the brain needs glucose nonstop. It doesn't go to sleep. It regenerates, it repairs at night. You know, you are asleep, but the brain performs some functions. And so you do need that steady uptake of a little bit of glucose, like the fire, you know, yeah, like the log in the fire, slow and steady, slow and steady. So if it's not in the dinner, if it's not in the evening snack, then you're in trouble. So this is what happens. There's not enough glucose. And the brain, unfortunately, doesn't store glucose for later. Uh, so there is an emergency storage of a little uh, glucose called glycogen in the liver. And it's for emergency central nervous system needs, exactly. Because, you know, the body has coping mechanism. You can't just die every night because your brain doesn't get glucose. You have to have some plan B. So there is a way. So just to that effect, the body stimulates adrenals to pump some more glucogen from liver to the brain. In order for that to happen, you have to increase the blood pressure. So adrenals pump cortisol. Cortisol tells your body to wake up. As opposed to melatonin, they're opposite, telling you to sleep, right? So you suddenly have the surge of cortisol. You wake up. Your blood pressure goes up because it's pumping that glucagon, glucogen to the brain. The brain says, oh, I got it. I'm fine. But you are all awake and jittery and like, oh, heart palpitation, high blood pressure, but also double whammy. What reactivates EBV? Number one reactivating factor in studies, in my experience, is stress, cortisol, adrenaline. There it is. Cortisol is up and it's spiking your EBV. So sometimes at night, people have both. They have all these symptoms from, from uh, high blood pressure from the, this process, but they also accidentally uh, reactivated EBV right there at night, in the middle of the night. It's feeding time for EBV because the cortisol is up. All right. So that is a very common scenario. So it's a combination of your adrenal situation, your glucose situation, your meals. So let's talk about two simple steps, very simple steps. Number two, number one, actually three simple steps. Number one is make sure that your dinner is a little later, so closer to seven than five. And number two, make sure you have a snack in the in the in the evening, especially if dinner is early. Um, so you know, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, if you need to, because remember, when you're healthy, you eat well, and everything is well in the body, you might not need those snacks. But when you have insufficient adrenal functions you have chronic stress from EBV, you're really compromised, you really need to support the body and those snacks are really important. And also make sure you have some carbs in dinner. So let's talk about snacks. There's actually research to support certain foods. And I have a couple of simple foods to start with, which are coming from research. And then you can experiment with other ones and see if that does the trick. And oftentimes that as well does the trick. Uh, the foods that I'm going to list contain GABA, calcium, potassium, melatonin itself, a little bit of uh, ornithine. So all of these help your brain in different ways. Um, the most um, simple, the simplest ones would be a little bit of cooked uh, brown rice or, you know, oats or teff, gluten-free grain, cherries, kiwis, walnuts. So you can make those into little snacks. 
Um, I like to recommend um, chia pudding because it has a lot of fiber. It has a little bit of fatty acids already. And then you can sprinkle some cherries or some kiwi or some and some walnuts, maybe a little honey or maple syrup. So you have a lot of glucose from that maple syrup or honey. You have a lot of fiber. You have a little bit of protein, a little bit of fat. Uh, you can have a kiwi walnut bowl, little bowl. And you don't need much, actually. You could have a little bowl by your by the side of the bed. And try these combinations. Try other, you know, maybe just the apple dipped in nut butter. And, and so try that and see if that does it. Also, remember about meals, having some glucose, having the slow glucose. And with that, I think you're going to get a decent, deep uh, REM sleep. You're going to be rested and repaired in the morning. And if that doesn't fix it, there's other patterns. Um, there's other issues around uh, around sleep. Like I said, I have an entire chapter in the book and an entire module with a lot of solutions, depending on the the causes of your insomnia in our EBV recovery program. So I hope this will work. Let us know if this helps you get a really good sleep consistently. We'll be excited for you. And um, I'll see you on the next training. Thank you so much, you guys.